All right, this is Rainbow Buddha Tattooing, and uh, today let's get into some coil machine science. We're going to be talking about frame geometry and how that affects your tattooing. Okay, now that that's over with, frame geometry. Now, a lot of people know what a tattoo machine looks like, right? And the actual mechanism is, is actually, it's pretty complex. So it's weird when we start thinking about, you know, how people run their machines having a specific, uh, I don't know, advantage in trying to accomplish specific aspects of it. If it's a black and gray machine, or if it's a color pack, or if it's a liner, or something else. And we, we don't really know how to break those things down, I think, in the industry past the, select few who seem to build them. So let's go over some of the variables that cause a tattoo machine to run differently. Now this machine was made by Corey Rogers. It's up Corey uh, in Texas, really, really rad machine builder. And uh, his geometries on his machines are unique because they vary quite a bit. When you buy mass production machines on average, they always have kind of like a set frame size, you know, positioning where things are, where the rear post is in relation to the top post or where the top post is in relation to the chuck, the distance, height, all these things. And it usually goes down to how much it weighs. We're gonna try to use different materials to, you know, make things feel lighter or whatever. But realistically, these three points inside of a coil machine actually have so much to do with how it operates. This is probably one of the most fundamental basic things. I mean, if you're gonna get into machine building anyways, you should know <clears throat> how these things are gonna work. Or if you're just at home, you know, screwing around with your tattoo machine, getting ready for a day's appointments at the shop, you, you may be trying to tune it. And most people just do it by ear. But there's a few things that we can do to help you tune it a little bit faster. Anyways, let's get into this. So these three points inside the machine, I don't even know why I put this down, might as well keep it. We're talking about the top post, which is where the contact is, the rear post that hangs the springs and the A-bar and such like that, and then the chuck where you keep in the tube, that geometry is gonna affect your speed. <clears throat> so what do I mean by that? Well, the tighter anything is together, right, the less it's going to have to move to try and accomplish whatever this goal is. And with this, it's gonna be moving the A-bar up and down, right? So <clears throat> the smaller the profile that we have with something, usually the faster it's gonna run. That's why usually we'll see like liner machines that we wanna be running really quickly are gonna have a smaller profile. <clears throat> and if we wanna have something old gold liner and black and gray can do that too. Um, and color machines, are usually gonna be bigger. So, <clears throat> what does that mean? Why is that important? Well, let's just take a look at how each one of these things interact. And I'm just doing this off the dome today and I'm, I'm actually a little bit ill, so I apologize if this is a meandering speech. Anyways, <clears throat> the distance between the rear post and the top post is gonna affect that, that spring that we have, right, with our A-bar on the bottom of it. So, the further that this has to travel, distance-wise, the more that you're gonna need weight-wise to accommodate such a thing, right? And usually when we're doing color machines, that longer, bigger profile is gonna have something that's gonna weigh more, right? We're gonna need a lot of energy to try and slap mags into the skin. So we're gonna have bigger springs, we'll probably have a longer A-bar, we're gonna have a longer front spring to accommodate how far that this actual distance is that's gonna go between these two things, right? Now, the distance between the top post and the chuck as well, the larger that it's gonna get, the taller it's gonna get, is the more amount of energy that we're actually gonna be required to push something very far, right? So this distance in between the top post and the chuck as it grows, you're also going to have these other things that are going to need to be bigger, right? We're going to need bigger coils, <laughs> which if they're taller, they're going to weigh more. If they weigh more, there's going to be more winding, more actual copper wire, magnet wire that's going to be wrapped around it, which is going to increase the weight. And it'll also increase how it runs, right? If there's more wire inside those coils, it's going to take more energy to energize them, which is going to take longer, which is going to need blah, 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 down the road, right? So. The last one would be like, yeah, the tube chuck to rear post. That's, that's our distance going out again. This is just gonna be the same thing, how far we're actually gonna be able to 
um, stretch any of these, these aspects, right? Which is gonna be where that A bar is in relation to the things coming out. So, to speed up or slow down your tattoo machine based on whatever geometry you have, first we gotta identify it, right? <laughs> if you have a machine that has almost like an, an equilateral triangle shape, to it, very tight, very dense, very small. It's probably gonna have very tall coils. There's really not too much that you can do timing-wise on these type of machines to get them to run outside of their set parameters, which is just gonna be quick, fast, nasty, and they're not gonna have probably a whole lot of like high-end power. As these actual shapes start to distort and change, and you get a little bit more play with this, right? If we have something with a really steep rear angle on it, the tighter and tighter and tighter that this gets, the more compact the coils are going to be. And usually the amount of uh, energy that's actually going to be displaced on that machine is going to be a bit lower than we would actually want to see with something that's going to be like a liner. We're usually going to have a multi-use machine that's going to be color and liner or just a color packer in general, right? <clears throat> now, if we have something that's kind of in between those and we're running a machine that has kind of an open-ended, whoop, almost like an isosceles type thing going on here. You're gonna have something that's gonna be built just to shred, right? As far as the distance gonna come out on this, we know we're gonna have a heavier A-bar, which the heavier A-bar that's gonna be on there is gonna just like have extra force pulling it down, right? It was just all of that meat is gonna be slapping needles into the skin a little bit harder. And especially since it's not gonna be very tall, we're gonna have coils that are gonna be smaller that can fire faster, right? So if you need to adjust your stuff on this, usually what we can do is small adjustments. The biggest one is gonna be with your, with your A bar and your spring setup, right? If you have, the back of your, your springs normally will have you know, a hole in it, right? <coughs> if you decide to stretch that hole out by getting like a metal hole punch, you can move that spring in, pull it back, you know, whatever, to try and either loosen up the amount of slap that you're gonna get or tighten it up. Because the closer that that A-bar gets to that rear post, there's less actual flexible material that's gonna be off the back of it, right? If we have something that's really, really, really tight in there, that back spring isn't gonna have to move a whole lot. It's just gonna be straight tension. So you're gonna require more energy to pull the A-bar down, but it's gonna be quicker in its actual movements. If that spacing inside of there increases, and we have a greater amount of gap behind it before we actually start mounting it, then you're gonna be able to actually get more flex, right? Which is gonna slow it down because the thing is gonna be able to move a whole lot more and require a lot more uptake on that return spring or your timing spring. That's gonna put a little bit more stress on your return spring as well. So if you do these adjustments with this, make sure on the back side of your binding post, you just grab some you know, emery paper, a file, something like that, and make sure that that edge is smooth. <clears throat> if you have a burr or something else that's on it, especially when you start shrinking up your values between those, the, the rear post and your, and your armature bar, it'll end up cracking and splintering the actual uh, spring stock pretty quickly. So that's it. So frame geometry. This is actually very important if you're gonna be running coil machines, right? Pay attention to the shapes of the triangles that are coming out of this, and if you do need to do a timing adjustment, not too hard. Anyways, that'll be it for today. It's Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.